Hey YouTube, Dan Ottawa here, coming at you with my final team of the season. Uh, cough, uh, no, Runerigus and Miltanger. Two Pokemon, actually I built up Talk Specs for just for this too, but I've, I've used it multiple times already. Miltank and, and Runerigus, I have not used yet, so I was interested to try them out. I have, I'm just going to play the battles, because there's a couple things that came to my mind when I was using these two Pokemon. So the first, let's just talk about Runerigus. So I mentioned in maybe yesterday's video that I felt like Runerigus was uh, like a little glassy, hit harder than Cofagrius and was glassier than Cofagrius. And I was like, let me look at the stats product. And the stats product was the same. But then someone mentioned, rightfully so, it's because most of the, yeah, mask and, look, and mine as well was a 12, 15, 15, while most of the Cofagrius you can get our sort of like rank one zero attack stats. So I put those into PV Poke. And you do get a bit of a difference there. So Kofagrigus sort of rank one, 25 and a half uh, level with 109 attack, uh, 167 defense, and 111 stamina. And then when I put in my 12, 15, 15 Renarigus, you get f like four more attack, 113 attack, four less defense, 163, and four less stamina at 107. So th that could account for a bit of the difference that I'm seeing there. Uh, but it's an interesting Pokemon. It's it's. I, I really liked it because it just, again, it felt attack heavy. So it fit, like a lot of things I was just kind of like one shotting, doing super, super well against the two very, very obvious drawbacks. Santium is great if you can bait properly, right? If you bait a Shadow Ball and you land, they shield and land a Santium, like nothing feels better, quite honestly. The problem is if one, they call the bait on Santium. Santium, although it lowers defense, is quite useless overall. Uh, and the second thing is, you are in huge trouble if you face a normal typing or dark typing, right? Because you cannot throw anything but the Shadow Balls. And it's even worse when you have a, uh, sorry, Santum. And it's even worse when you have an Octavo, which is flying and normal, which resists everything. So it just so easily gets walled. So I would never, ever run this team if I was running Renarigus. I'm only running it because these are the only Pokemon that I have for this Catch Cup, which will be done tomorrow. Uh... So if you're going to run Runerigus, you need something to deal with darks. You need something to deal with normals. So you're probably going to pair it with at least one, maybe two fighters, right? Or counter users or swamp birds or something, something like that to deal with those. Mill tank was much like Dunsparce, a huge disappointment. And it all, in my opinion, comes down to rollout. So rollout was the move that they gave these Pokemon that were supposed to make them meta. And what I found was like, your damage and energy per second is not where it should be to make this Pokemon good, right? You do obviously like three rollouts to get to a body slam, five to get to a thunderbolt here. So it's not bad, but I was looking up similar fast moves that have terrible damage per second, but are energy generating moves, right? So let's start with one of the best moves in the game. So mud shot has a 3.6 damage per second, and it gives you nine energy per second. Sort of the fastest energy per second is lock on, which gives you 10 energy per second, but only two damage per second. And then psycho cut is another one, 3.6 damage per second and nine energy per second. So rollout actually has the lowest energy per second out of all of those. It only has an 8.67. So again, lock on is 10, mud shot is nine, Psycho Cut is 9, so 8.67 is not as fast as energy as you wanted. And it has the third lowest, quite far from Mudshot, again, Mudshot Psycho Boost, 3.6 damage per second. Rollout is only 2.67 damage per second. And then Lock is obviously 2, but you get the 10 energy per second, right? So what I've noticed with Mill Tank is that it's quite bad because of Rollout. Rollout doesn't do any damage pressure like uh yeah any damage pressure you're really just doing it to spam mill tank is not an attack heavy pokemon and then your energy per second you're only getting 8.67 where i think if you're at a 2.67 damage per second you need to be somewhere in that nine range right so that's i think the problem with both dunsparce and mill tank and some would argue that you can't make them any more spammier because then they would be like too strong but for me like it's maybe fine in certain metas but i just found it as like a hindrance quite honestly in these in these battles so that is something to keep in mind if you plan on running 
uh, either Dunsparce or Meltank. Know that the rollout is actually quite a bad move overall, and it leads to significant. It, it 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 knocks them down substantially. And then we have a uh, Toxapex, which is fine for this meta. It's fine for Open Great League too, right? It's with all these flyers coming out. It's not terrible. Um, I will talk about, so tomorrow I'm going to make a video, like right after this, I'm going to make a video going over my legendaries, hint, none, from GBL rewards. Shinies, decent amount actually, so I'll show you guys those. And then PV Poke has updated the rankings for season 13. So I just want to do a quick analysis of how these moves have shifted. So like right off the bat, you're going to see, oops, right off the bat, you're going to see that into the top 10, three flyers, because the wing attack buff is too strong. Um, Noctowl, Pelipper, and Pidgeot with wing attack are all in the top 10 now. So if that's the case, if they're all in the top 10, you're gonna see a uh, uptick in your Registeels and Galarian Stunfisk to deal with those. I think more Registeels, because Galarian Stunfisk still loses if baited properly against Noctowl, and the Pelipper is going to outpace you now significantly to the Weather Balls. So I think Registeel is going to make a huge comeback. Um, and then Nidoqueen has fallen, like, speak about Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen has fallen right off the, the, <laughs> the earth because two things happened. One, Charm got nerfed, so there's not going to be as many Charmers, and its Poison Jab got nerfed. So it dropped like 100 in the rankings, and it's because its main thing was that it was just able to like two shield everything and just poison jab, poison fang its way all the way to the end there. But it can't do that anymore. So it dropped significantly. So that is interesting to note. Um, yeah, but I'll go over the full sort of look at all the, anal the analysis, what teams I think people are going to start running because of it, who's going to have more play, who's going to have less play, uh, and we will go from there. So yeah, the season is over. I crashed four or five times this morning in a span of the it's i don't know how they haven't like i i know why because the other parts of the game are amazing right the speed that you send gifts the speed that you s catch pokemon i'm doing way more of that stuff that I, I like wouldn't do as much because of how fast it is now they're trading that off for a game that just continues to crash in gbl and they're doing that because the majority of the player base doesn't care about GBL, right? And this is why I say it's a dying thing. I've got to imagine that not as many people are playing GBL anymore. I mentioned the other day that like factions teams are like quitting all over the place. Like players, the game's getting stale. Some of the staples that have played for a long time aren't playing anymore, like Wallower and stuff like that. It just, I think this game is getting too stale. I think the meta is getting too stale. I think that like, GBL is is becoming one of the lower priorities. It was always a low priority, but it's coming to be a lower priority for this game, which means that, um, which means that they're not going to fix this bug because the majority of the people like the, how fast the game is now. So it'll be very very interesting how long this bug is here. It's very frustrating because I can't like. It doesn't matter to me now because I've already hit Legend. It's going to matter to me come Thursday afternoon when I'm playing and I'm losing games because the game's crashing on me. But we will see. I'll talk about that tomorrow more in the rant. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.